now at this point we have the background uh, just about to depth. We've sloped it back, this being the deepest portion right around the top of the building, shallower here and coming right out to the original surface out here in front. Uh, right now I want to uh, show you how to determine the depth of the building. Before I said the building slopes a little bit forward to increase some of the depth uh, perspective, perspective here in the back, but we don't slope it forward enough to where it's really noticeable. But we know at the beginning that the building is going to sit right down onto the ground plane that we've established. So we've cut this ground plane. We know this is going to be a deeper area here. So I'm just going to take the V-tool and work this corner right down to the depth of the ground plane. Now because the corner is sticking out, this corner here, I am not going to touch that. But eventually this whole surface here has to come down. Uh, so right now I'm going to cut the steps. The steps are going to stick out a little bit. Now initially when I drew this here robber coming out of the bank, I had him carrying a bag of money and a pistol in his hand. I decided to change that, so I wanted to put a Tommy gun in his hand. The fellow in the car has got a Tommy gun also, but seeing that we're featuring Tommy guns, that's what I want, want to put in his hand also. And uh, what I'm doing now is I'm just going to block out around this man rather than try to do all the stop cuts right now. Now the next thing, if, before I start roughing out the side, these lights are going to stick out a little bit, so I need to save some stock for them. And I'm not going in very deep with my V-tool. But the windows and the door, I'm not going to worry about right now. I'll redraw those back in, because they're going to go a little deeper than the surface that I'm cutting. Now this top part of the bank, that detail is going to stick out further than the wall. And right now I'm not going to worry about the sign. I can add that in later. And I know the line I just put come down is not very straight, but I will straighten it out later. This being the high point, I want to come back down this side now. This is going to stick out further, so I'm just going to cut, make the stop cut right on the top of that and come this side right over to meet this line right here. Now I can take the gouges and just start right from this corner and work right up. So I'm tilting the gouge down on an angle to do this side here first. And then I'm going to go on an angle here. And I'm going to go right down to the ground plane because I know that's how deep it's got to be. And here also. And now I'll just start working this surface back. And I already know that I have to deepen this stop cuts here, but I'm just going to work on that surface. I'll come back and do the stop cuts a little later. Got to be careful not to lose my lights there. So I just keep working this surface down. Just 
it'll be a little faster if I get a wider chisel. This chisel right here. Just flattens it down a little faster. So I made the stop cuts at every location where the planes change. Uh, like the running board right here is one plane and where that meets with the body is another plane. So right there is where I made a stop cut and I'm just working down to the bottom of the stop cuts. The top of this fender is also another plane against the body. This tire has got a high ridge, so you have the treads of the tire coming down around this side. So where the point is sticking out at you, you don't want to make a stop cut here because that has to be high. So that's where my transition of the planes are going to be is right on that line. So I'm keeping this part of the tire high. The stop cut was right at the bottom of the tire, so that's kind of where I'm coming in with the top of the fender. The tire is sticking into the fender a little bit. So now I'm going to cut, cut this plane here down to the bottom of the stop cuts. Even moving the light around, looking at how flat the surface is. In other words, this plane should all be flat until it goes back to the back of the car where the back window is. So your hand is better at finding high spots and low spots than your eye is. So your hand should, you should feel over here and you can feel the high spots. So you don't always see them, but you, you can feel them. Where that became very valuable is on the face of this building here. And I'm still not quite flat, but I had a big high spot in the center that was kind of gradual and it didn't cast a shadow to where I really saw that, but with rubbing my hand over the top, I could feel it. So use your hands a lot when you're looking at the drawing with your hands, feeling there's a high spot right in here. I need to take a bigger chisel and flatten that off. And you can't see that with the shadow. It's just a gradual little hump there. If you don't get it nice and flat like the building is, then it's not going to give you the illusion of the face of a building because the building is straight. This corner needs to be nice and straight, nice and vertical, so that I gotta make, so it breaks the shadow very nice right at that edge. So this is the kind of the fine tuning that I do before I start working on the details of the lighting here and uh, the steps and all of that. Make sure all the planes are right, that all these are breaking at the right point where the planes break. Everything lines up. This has got quite a hump here. And that's gonna go right down to the bottom of the stop cut. Now the, it looks like it'd be difficult to do a man like this, but I wanted to show you the steps. The steps are outlining around. That is the negative space. So you're going to get rid of all of the space around it between the legs or under the uh, Tommy gun, over the Tommy gun. Get rid of all that negative space. And then once that is there, then uh, we're going to do the rounding and the uh, 
man is just going to pop right out. So uh, we're going to be mindful of each of the, of the planes and cutting at certain angles. But that's important to get the line straight back to the depth and up close to the lines. The picture of the car is right here, and it's a 1931 Oldsmobile. And so I'm trying to get some of the details off of that. And uh, so I'm going to start now drawing in the windows, the areas that I got to be carving in. The back window. There's two windows along the, here. The trunk. Now this used to be real trunks that they fastened right in the back. That's pretty interesting. Um, need to clean that bumper up. The bumper goes in in the middle and it comes back out on that side. Now because the car is this car is standing still, I am going to carve the spokes on it also. But I'm not going to draw in each individual spoke. It's kind of got a wire type spoke, but I'm going to do it a little bit heavier because that's just a little easier to carve. And then that little line that goes around the top. Okay, now the bank. I've got it smooth and like the steps I just have the uh, slant coming down so I'm going to put in the steps, uh, the door, front door is going to be here. Draw those details back in that I cut off earlier. And keep the tops of these windows and doors all uniform and then add the door in over here also with the steps so all I did for the steps is I've just kinda made a slant I've got a little step coming up here I didn't blend this step right down because it's gonna start rising right up um, and uh, I have the detail done of around the top of the building and where the sign is going to be. I was looking at a earlier uh, uh, scene here and it looked like this bank was not straight so I took out a square so I'm, I got a square machine square and I'm checking the, that this building is perpendicular uh, not leaning to the side like it looked on the tape and uh, yeah it's not leaning to the side it's uh, square so that was just a little lens distortion so now that we know the building is straight, we're uh, going to start carving this fella here. I've got him all outlined and uh, uh, I'm going to change a little bit of the outlining as I go, but um, it's just a matter of starting to round it off. The reason why I'm doing this here portion is the... Uh, Fella, one fella called and says, boy, you make it look easy, especially doing these little people. I'm sure I couldn't do that, these small details. And so I wanted to show you uh, that it isn't that difficult to do these small details. So what I've done here to start with, the first step is to outline very close around the object and you've gotten rid of all that additional stock. Now what I'm going to do is just start rounding this off. So the first thing you want to do is set them onto the step. So I'm carving the bottom of his foot so it's not floating in the air and now he's actually setting on the step. And I'll just define that foot just a little bit right there. And the other one, I need to put that down on the step. That knee will come out a little bit and then it'll go into his waist a little bit. So we're going to stick that knee out a little bit. And then I'm just going to round that leg off. And 
and I'm going to thin it up a little bit more like so. Now I'm going to get the V tool and I'm going to use a small V tool and uh, I'm going to outline this arm. This arm is the next thing that's going to be sticking out. Then the round part of the Tommy gun that holds the shells, I'm going to outline around that. So this part of the chest is just going to be sunken in, so I'm just going to sink it in. So you kind of see how it's taking shape already. I'm going to leave a little line here at the bottom, that's the bottom of his coat. Now I'm going to come on under the brim of the hat and on the top of the brim of the hat we know the brim sticks out so I'm going to cut down both sides around the brim and then where the face is here I'm just going and just down to the top of the stock on the Tommy gun. And now that shoulder sticks out further than the stock of the Tommy gun, so I'm just going to make a little line and bring that other part of the arm up to the trigger, like that. And then just taking the flat part of my V-tool, I'm flattening off that stock to sink it in a little bit. I'm just defining around the cylinder that's holding the shells and then right where his hand is here. This is the left hand that's up on the in the front of the shells coming and stabilizing the front end of the machine gun. Then I'm going to cut this down deeper now I'm going to slant that canister, that round cylinder that's holding the shells. So it sticks out in the uh, back and it sloped this direction, going in like that. And I'll just start defining his hand a little bit around this handle here. rounding that body off a little bit, making that canister stick out a little bit more. So uh, you see how I'm trying to get that leg, this knee sticking forward. taking off some of my black lines here that I don't need anymore. And thinning down that barrel of the Tommy gun. Thinning down that arm a little bit, making it round. It's a little awkward working around this uh, tripod here, but uh, trying to get all the cuts right. Now the back of his head, I need to round that off so I'm going to get a smaller chisel. It's the, uh, this is a number one chisel, but it's just about the right size to go in and round the back of his head, to round the top of that hat, to round the front of the hat. Now the face, I want to just make a point sticking out for his nose. Their eyes are under their hat. Um, all I want to do is just get the illusion that it's a man, man's face. Then where the trigger hole is in the gun, I'm going to come down and make a little deeper impression in there. Shoulder. 
shoulders stick out a little bit more. Round the brim of the hat so it's not flat on the top. Get the brim of the hat pointed down a little bit. And there we've got a pretty good start of a guy going. So now it's just to go in there and do a little bit more of the refining the details, getting some of the chips out of there. And, but that's the basic shape. And that was the hardest thing for him to see when he was asking me about it. Now along this same discussion, that rounding that guy off, is this Tommy gun. And it's just a matter of rounding this off. Now the illusion is, is first of all, this top is flat. And what sticks out the furthest is going to be this canister again that holds the shells. So what I'm trying to do is keep this gun out as far as possible so it uh, has very nice shadows around it. And uh, so I want it to be, this is the focal point of the uh, whole carving. So I want it to be dynamic. But I have to move it back a little bit here on the top to make this point here stick out. But I want to move it back just the minimum amount. And so creating kind of an optical illusion. So what we'll start off with again with that V tool and just start making the cuts. Now I'm not worried about this detail right now. That's the detail that uh, turns as the canister turns and uh, I can add that in later. So I'm not going to cut around that. So the first thing I'm going to do is outline around this canister, make the stop cuts. And then I'm going to cut it on an angle to start establishing the angle that it's going to be on. So if you notice how I'm cutting with my chisel and just kind of following my line on that cut. And this top part that's going to be sunk in a little bit, that goes right into the gun up there. And I'm going to start making that rounded appearance. And coming right from here, I'm going to start rounding it, the bottom of it. Just going in a little bit. Not very much. Going at the wrong angle and I hit the, sorry about that, hit the tripod with my hand. There we go. Okay, now I don't have that straight line anymore, so I'm going to come around here and establish that corner again. Okay, so this is the high point right here. And it doesn't drop down very far. Maybe I've got uh, a sixteenth of an inch that we're going to be going in. So um, that's going to keep it out very nice. The next thing I want to do is this detail right here sticks out a little bit. And then these are the cooling fins on the barrel. I'm going to make the stop cut over the top of that. Before I do the cooling fins, I'm going to uh, level everything off. On a stock like this, it is fairly flat, but you really don't want to have any real flat surfaces. So your curve is mostly right on the ends and uh, on the edges, and you just want to not quite make it really flat. Still carve a little bit of roundness. Now the stop cuts for the 
barrel and the uh, trigger mechanism. Uh, we're just going to take and run the heat tool. Now I made this a little bit deeper instead of a 30 second we're down about a sixteenth of an inch and it kind of gives a nice roundness I also put in a little bit of a detail there for the device that rotates as the uh, uh, as the bullets are uh, coming around getting fed into the barrel this is the back sight and I'm just using now the flat part of the V-tool as a straight chisel. Uh, also have the cuts made here. Before I put these fins on, I'm going to uh, round that portion because the fins are round, they aren't square. So now that the stop cuts are made, I'm just going to go into the rounding of it. cylinder goes in there. Tommy gun also has a clip. You can either use the round cylinder or the clip. Uh, we wanted to make it more recognizable by using the uh, round cylinder to uh, hold some more bullets. Now the back side of this is a uh, is not flat got a little detail that sticks out. We will make that round. And kind of a cap on the back end of that barrel. fins and then that goes down to a smaller diameter of the barrel. Now the front grip is narrow too, so that we're going to make it. And then with the hand grip for the fingers, we're going to go in and round each one like this. And round the back side. Fins are going to be just a V tool, so I'm going to uh, define the edge of the top of that grip, like so, and then follow the lines just around the barrel. And that's how we're going to do the fins all the way up. The hand grip trigger, trigger mechanism here in the back needs to be narrow, but I want to save where this opening is of the trigger. So this is going to end up being a hole in front of the trigger for the trigger finger to go into. And uh, I'm just going to take a ch chisel around small gouge. I'm going to do a circle, starting off with, and just work that circle down. 
then I will cut behind the trigger. And I'm going to do this before I thin the wood down for the tr trigger mechanism. Uh, if I thinned it down, and I would take my drawing right off the top. The back side, we can use the same gouge. Instead of making a circle, I'm going to make a half moon. That's enough to hold the drawing and we can refine that after I get the trigger mechanism down. This has got one detail on the bottom and then it just swoops up and flatten that whole trigger mechanism down. There's a little detail where the wood grip ends here and the metal, the wood grip is down here for the hand and then this is metal around up here. So you can kind of see how it's all developing couple other things I wanted to show uh, is texturing. I am uh, really big on texturing and when I texture um, I like to separate different areas. So this is the road down here at the bottom and the sky here. So I don't want any texture in the sky or the road. So I'm separating those two with this texture and it could be ground, it could be uh, grass, but I like to rock the chisel and I don't want it to be like dark grass but I just want a little bit of the surface broken so it just looks a little different than the road and the sky where it reflects the light a little different way. I think it'll make the gun stand out a little bit better because it won't be, the gun is going to be kind of smooth no texture on it and uh, this texturing in the background will help make it stand out a little bit more. But you see how easy it goes and you see I'm not doing much rocking at all. I'm pushing forward and as I do the turn it advances ahead kind of on its own. I'm not pushing harder to advance it. That turning action is what's doing it. And that's just enough texture. Uh, if I put in more texture than this, I think it would detract from the uh, focal point, which is the Tommy gun. Also, the trees don't have much texture in them. Now, this ended up being too symmetrical. In other words, you can tell where I rocked the chisel. So I'm just going to go and break it again across the surface, just lightly. I don't want the rocking to be recognizable, just that the surface is a little bit disrupted. The light will break and make shadows a little different way. Three, two, one. Uh, in putting the texture on the uh, side of the bank, uh, we're going to use stone. And uh, to put stone in, what I've done 
is I haven't drawn in every one of the lines. I have just taken the uh, and drew in a uh, line here, line here, kind of just as a guideline. And uh, so I'm going to add in more lines in between those. This is going to be kind of a limestone. Now you see the way that I'm using uh, this gouge. I'm sliding it sideways. The reason why it's cutting so nice is that it's kind of working like a saw. It's a sawing action. And look at the difference between using this versus using a V-tool. If I was to go with a V-tool in here, I would also have to control the depth. And so uh, here I can make lines very quickly uh, faster than a V-tool just by moving it up coming right across. And you don't want to make the lines perfect uh, like they were drawn with a ruler. That would look way too stiff. So this is much faster than a V-tool and you don't have to control the depth. It's easy cutting. So I kind of wanted to show you this trick. I've showed it in other videos and uh, uh, we've in the basics, we talked about using the chisel straight ahead and upside down and a plunge cut, but we never talked about some of these techniques. The technique of rocking it that we did for the background, the technique of sliding it. So you would think, gee, the tightest radius that I can make with a uh, gouge like this is a curve like that. No, you can actually make a pretty tight radius in sliding it along. So these are very tight radiuses in here. Now I'm trying to adjust the light so you can kind of see the uh, how the stone texture is. And the stone texture is not supposed to be pronounced. What we're doing is just making a hint of stone. And so I just have to add some vertical lines and I'm not putting the vertical lines, lining them up. So it's going to be kind of like a, a limestone. I'm also just sliding my chisel forward, but it's not as acute angle here, so I wanted the, uh, it's somewhat the same technique as sliding it across this way, but I'm just going a little bit more uh, dishing it out a radius like that. I just want a hint of a stone on there. Not making it real structured so it doesn't appear to be stiff.
also are trying to make a likeness of uh, John Dillinger on the, off of this wanted poster. And when you look at it, you're looking at some just very dark areas. His hair is very dark. There's dark right around here. He's unshaven. And uh, his eye sockets are very dark. So what I've done is I've done a basic contour of his face. Let me move the light so we can uh, maybe see a little bit better of what we're trying to uh, show here. And we'll zoom in a little bit more. So now the tool that I'm going to use to make this darkness is going to be a Dremel tool. So it's a basic Dremel tool. It's about a $10 tool from the hardware store. And it reciprocates back and forth in uh, that direction. And I took the tip and I ground it down like a needle. Uh, so it's got a very sharp point like a knife on the end. And that's what I'm going to start working on the eyes and uh, the shadow in the eye sockets. That kind of gives you a little better idea what the texture is doing. And uh, I just have to work a little bit more on the mouth. I don't want to show any smile at all on them. But the challenge is, it's a very shallow relief and we just have a hint of flatness. Because this is on a printed poster, we don't want it to be uh, uh, any deeper than that because it'll lose the flatness effect of a printed page. There, we've got it pretty well done. A little bit of cleanup, and we'll have it. 